<laughs> can everybody hear me? Because I'm going to go ahead and get started. I only have 45 minutes in there and come out and yank me. I could talk for two hours. So I'm going to get started so we, if we can get anything in. If you can, um, I'll try to go through this and then hopefully have time for questions. But I want to get you guys this information. Can I, am I okay here? Okay. All right. I'm just going to tell you really briefly. My name is Susan Grossinger. You can call me Sue. I am the Senior Services Coordinator at Good Shepherd Hospital. I am both a master trainer of the Matter Balance Program. I'm also a SHIP Coordinator, which is a Medicare Navigator, and then I do a lot of crazy things that everybody asks of me there. I um, have been there 18 years. I've been in Crystal Lake 25 years. So we usually come here every year. It's a great um, fair. I really like it. A lot of, lot of really good information. So we're going to talk about fall prevention, all right? Fall prevention is a tough subject because it actually we have to work to try to prevent falls. It's not as easy as we think. It's something that we have to work on every single day, okay? We, preventing falls means balance, awareness, life, assessment, nutrition, control, and exercise, okay? It is a matter of just balancing everything. Let's see if this works. Okay. Okay. How many people have fallen? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I have. Okay. How many people, because you fell, are afraid you might fall again? All right. And has anybody changed their lifestyle as a result of that fall because they're afraid they may fall again? Okay. All right. Well. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Anybody here think, oh, it won't happen to me. It happens to other people. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Well, I used to think that too. I'm going to tell you a quick story. That's me. And even though my hair looks really short. Um, okay. I have worked out. I had uh, blew my knee skiing in 2001. I had knee surgery, and I have worked out four days a week since then. Okay, it's a long time. I have fallen down my stairs four times, five times. All right? Why? I work out. I'm not weak. I keep busy. Again, I work out four days a week. Why am I still falling? All right, first two times I was a young mother. What was I carrying going down the stairs? Not my kids, thank you. Laundry. I was carrying a laundry basket twice, all right? Two times I hurt my ankle really bad. What did my husband say to me? You're a klutz, okay? That was the solution. I was just klutzy. Third time falling down the stairs, I was going down and did I turn the lights on? No. Each time I missed the bottom two steps. So the third time I fell, not my ankle, I was my head was going towards the wall, and I turned and it ended up to be my shoulder. And I was in my probably mid 40s by that time. The first few times I was in my 30s. All right. The fourth time I fell, I was about to go down my two stairs from the you know the house into the garage. The garage door was open. I looked out. I was looking at something in my on my um, driveway. I went to step. Guess what? I missed the two steps. I went down on the concrete. Okay. The fourth, the fifth time I fell was recently, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But so, as a master trainer, and I am a master trainer of a program called A Matter of Balance. I realized I have some fall faulty habits, okay? And I needed to start thinking about what are those things that I did that resulted in me falling? First, I get up at 4.30 in the morning, so I get to work by seven. I have two Akitas. So first, when I'm about to go down my stairs, did I turn the light on? It's already getting dark again at five o'clock when I go downstairs. No. Why didn't I turn my light on? 
I'm a little OCD. I didn't like that the light switch was up at the top of the stairs and down at the, so I didn't want to turn the light on because my light switches were out of sync. So I took my chances. A couple times I took my cell phone. Okay, I'm telling you, we do crazy <coughs> stuff. Didn't turn the light on. Second, well, my dogs. She's awake. All right, we're going to eat. They're, one's 110, the other's 85. They're around me. Third, dog toys. Did I pick the dog toys up at night? And fourth, as I'm walking down the stairs, what am I thinking about? This is probably the biggest thing. What am I thinking about when I'm walking down the stairs? Am I thinking about walking down the stairs? No. I'm thinking about everything I have to do to get down the stairs, to get my dogs ready, and get to work by 7 o'clock in the morning. So I'm not, what am I? Am I paying attention? No. Those are my four faulty habits. So that was three, four, four, five years ago. I realized that five, six years ago. I, knock on wood, have not fallen in my house. Okay? Every single morning, I have to think about those things. Every morning. Because you know what? I'll forget. And you know what? I might fall again. That's why I'm saying, this may not, you know, it's not so easy. We have to think and become aware. What am I doing that's putting me at risk? And we're going to talk about some of the, there I am, falling on my head. Some of the things that each of us have to do to make those changes. Okay? False statistics. This is what I want you to know. 30 to 35% of people over the age of 65 fall each year. There are two, those who fall are then two to three times more likely to fall again. One in five causes serious injury. Leading causes of death from injury among 65 and older. All these issues, motor vehicle, look at falls. Okay, leading cause of death that come into emergency rooms, all of our emergency rooms here in the community. Leading cause of non-fatal injuries falls okay leading places of falls for hospital admission where does it happen most in our home in our home places of falls resulted in fatalities death in our home doing what everyday activities I was doing this, I turned because I forgot something. Guess what? I lost my balance. I fell. As we get older, are we always, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk this way, and I'm going to walk this way. No, we walk straight, especially if we're concerned about falling. We're going to keep walking straight. We lose some of those abilities to make those changes. All right? Discharge status, once you go into the hospital from a fall. Skilled nursing, 39%. Home, only 33%. So what does that mean? That means falls make big changes in our life. We want to live our life the best way we know how, to the fullest, and how we want to live it, we've got to start thinking about how to prevent that fall. Because it can make that change. I'll tell you something. What do we fight for our whole life, from the day we're 18 months till the day we die? Independence. Okay? People, many times, will do things that actually, because they're independent, they can do it themselves, that put that independence at risk and can take it away because you didn't want to ask somebody to do it for you or to help you with something. Think about that, okay? Um, this one is Good Shepherd's types of injuries. There's a motor vehicle, other 
lacerations, falls. Number of cause, number one cause of traumatic injuries at our hospital, and I'm sure it's the same at other hospitals, Northwestern, Centegra. This killed me. I'm in this category. People over the age of 55. It's not 85. It's 55. Account for more than half of the injuries that come to our hospital. 55 and older. And traumatic death mechanism. Of, it, of the traumatic related deaths that occur, 80% the traumas that come into our hospital 80% of those deaths are falls. So here's our problem from a healthcare perspective. That's why I'm here talking to you. When you come into the emergency room and the doctor says, did you, you know, you fell. Can we go, oh, here's a pill. Take that, go home. Take it once a day for 20 days and you won't fall. Uh, no. What can we do? to impact, this is kind of a healthcare issue, crisis. How do we help people stay vertical and stay healthy and independent? So we're gonna quickly talk about causes of falls and what we can do to prevent them. It's usually two or more risk factors. Maybe poor balance, low vision, Home or environmental risk factors play a role in half of the falls. So what I like to say is, when the sun and the moon and the stars all come into alignment, we may fall. It's all, you know, when the moon, whatever, all gets into connection. What if we took one of those factors out? Maybe the next time you won't fall. It's always going to be a combination of something. I asked somebody, why do you think you fell? Well, I was rushing and I left my, I uh, had somebody, she was sitting in her chair and she was rushing and she, like, she sits and knits. Well, her knitting basket was right next to her. And she was rushing, she tried to get up, she tripped over her knitting bag. So a combination of things. Put the knitting basket somewhere else. It's okay. I know it's very convenient to be right there, but she tripped over it. Okay? So it's always going to be, like me, it's a combination of a lot of things <laughs> that I have to think about. So there are modifiable risk factors. Biological is like leg weakness, mobility problems, problems with balance, poor vision, behavioral. Some people are on meds. There are many people that take four or more medications. Risky behaviors and inactivity. Environmental, clutter. Clutter, clutter, clutter. I can't tell you how many times when my son was living at home, he wore a size 13 or 14 shoe and my husband wore a 12 and we would have five or 10 shoes at the back door and guess who tripped over them? Because no one would put away their shoes. My husband's big argument is he put shoes over in the corner by my dresser. He has three pairs of shoes over there. I'm like, why are these shoes here? Why aren't they in the closet? Because I trip over them getting in my dresser. What if there's a fire? I go, well, you're gonna put three pairs of shoes out if there's a fire? Clutter, clutter, clutter. No, tri no stair railings or grab bars and poor lighting, okay? Those are modifiable risk factors. Those are places we can make changes. I have a, um, a nice chest at the base of my bed. I need to move it because there's only about this much room between the chest and my TV. So when I'm going around my bed, guess what happens? Sometimes I've ripped a few pairs of pants. I bump into it. I have to find a new location for my chest. Those are all modifiable risk factors, but they are risk factors. The fear of falling can cause people to restrict their activities. Studies have proven that if people become concerned or fearful that they're going to fall because they either have fallen or they've noticed 
their balance is a little bit off, guess what? What do they start doing if they're afraid? Yes, sir? Did you, did you say something? Oh. They stop, they lower their activity. They do less. If I don't go out, or if I don't do something, I'm not going to fall. All right? When they restrict their activities, because they think it's going to reduce their risk of falling, it leads to falls. The theory behind one of the classes I teach is, as fear goes up, activity goes down. People think that their fall risk goes down, it goes up. Because why? You get weaker. You lose that flexibility and that balance. Losing flexibility or getting weaker or not or your or your balance getting worse is not a natural part of aging. Alright? So your you, your activity goes down you lead to more falls. So part of this program says, if we boost your confidence, make you feel that you do have control over what happens in your life, and to prevent falls, we boost that confidence, which lowers your fear, and increase your activity, guess what? That's what lowers your fall risk. Balance, I, haven't, I had a dietician once say, okay? Protein, people don't eat enough protein all the time, leads to strength because the protein feeds your muscles, okay? Which leads to balance, all right? You've got to build your strength. Doesn't mean you have to go out and run a marathon. It just means increase your activity level. If you like to walk, keep walking. If you like to ride a bike, or do an exercise bike, keep doing it. Don't stop. The weaker you feel, the more important it is to increase that activity level. It's not how you do it, it's what can you do. Whatever it is you can do, keep building your muscles till you're whatever. Falls and fear of fall are controllable and changing your environment also will reduce the risks. A majority of falls occur routine. Answering the phone, walking to the bathroom at night. How many people have a nightlight? I do. I had a nightlight in my kid's bathroom, for, and then now they're 32 and 27. Don't live with me, thank God. No. Um, but the nightlight is still there. They're gone, but the nightlight is still there. So I can see, because I have two big dogs that are like, you know, in the bathroom and next to my bed. So I have to pay attention to them. Tripping over clutter or pets, all right? Inactivity. Inactivity is as bad for seniors as smoking. Seriously. All right? Stay active. It results in loss of muscle strength, which results in loss of balance. It can compromise your social interaction. It can increase the risk for isolation, depression, and anxiety. Fear of falling causes and contributes to falling. The less we do, the weaker we get. The weaker we get, the less flexibility we have. The less flexibility we have, the less balance we have. What do you think is the most important joint in your body that contributes to balance? It's test time. Your legs. Legs? What else? What do you think? Part of the leg, sort of. Lower. Ankle. Yes. Your ankle. Why? What am I walking? My ankle is feeling and adjusting to my terrain. It is reporting to my brain what I need to do as I maneuver different obstacles. My father had neuropathy. He couldn't feel his feet. Guess what? He fell a lot. All right? Even doing foot circles, ankle circles, 
whenever you can, get them flexible, they will impact your balance. Your hip flexors will impact your balance. All right? But the ankles, anything you can do to get them both directions, get them flexible, is wonderful. And can increase and provide you with better balance. And getting your legs stronger also. Just marching. As we get older, does everybody pick their feet up as much as they should when they're walking? Do we start shuffling? Yes. Sit in a chair, march. Remember, pick your feet up. Not only does that remind you so you don't trip, you know, hit the carpet and trip, it also strengthens your legs, builds endurance, okay? Stretching, just stretching will provide you with a benefit. You can just stand there, you're doing your dishes. Stretch, do your foot or ankle circles. Keep moving. Other risk factors, poor vision, medications, poor nutrition, gait and balance problems, osteoarthritis and osteoporosis. You have some of these, it's even more important for you to keep active and do some exercises. Okay? Vision. As we age, our vision can change. It's due to the reduction in your pupil size, all right? Loss of focusing capabilities. What I think is interesting here, because of the smaller pupil size, older eyes receive less light at the retina. The eye of a 20-year-old receives six times more light through their eye than an 80-year-old. In dark conditions, a 20-year-old receives 16 times more light. All right? It is important to get your annual, it's like wearing sunglasses because your retina, your pupils decreases in size. It's not letting the light in. It's important to get annual eye exams and use bright light during the day and night lights at night. Night lights are great. You want to light the way. Don't use your cell phone, that's cheating. Be careful with new medications. My dad, if he was, if they adjusted his blood pressure medication, it would wipe him out. He was very sensitive. So, you know, he got weaker. So he had to always stay in contact with his doctor if he started to feel um, any changes with his medications. If you're taking blood thinners, it's even more important to make sure you don't fall because it can cause serious bleeding, even with minor injuries. And eat healthy, okay? Eat a well-balanced diet, drink water. I hate water, but drink water. It is so important. As we get older, we drink less, we get more dehydrated. A lot of older adults can get urinary tract infections because you're not flushing your system. You gotta flush it out. I go visit my daughter in Denver. I gotta start drinking water three days before I go because of the altitude. Otherwise, I'll get altitude sickness. Oh, I hate water. But drink it. You got to. You gotta flush that system. It's really important. All right? And again, eat good food. Protein is really important. You don't have to eat red meat. But protein feeds our body. It feeds your muscles, all right? And the muscles, if they're strong, strength, that feeds our balance. Gait and balance disorders, it's common and can be a major cause of falls. It's related to some medical conditions, but is, it, it is not considered inevitable consequence of aging. Tell your doctor about any falls, or difficulty with gait and balance so they can be treated. But like I said, if you have neuropathy, if you have some gait issues, it's even more important to find exercise or activities that are good for you. And there's things you can do. Um, one of the other master trainers is an adaptive personal trainer, 
And she works with paraplegics. She works with people with MS, with Parkinson's. You all, there's something for everybody that you can do. I know people don't like to work out, don't think of it as working out. As somebody once said in one of the videos we show, um, it's like your, next, your other medication. You take your medications, you do your exercise. Osteoarthritis, it affects a lot, millions and millions of seniors, people. You can use some medication, Good. Um, pain, anti-inflammatories, joint replacement, weight loss. I know people hate to see, hear that, but weight loss alleviates the pain and the pressure on your joints. And physical activity to increase your strength and your flexibility. And osteoporosis, it's the most common metabolic bone disease in the US, low bone mass, leads to increased bone fragility. It's most frequent in elderly white women. It's considered the silent thief, because we don't know we have it. So, some important things to keep in mind to help prevent the risk of falls. Ooh. Plan ahead. Don't rush. That's my biggest culprit, is rushing and multitasking. Somebody's hurrying because they forgot this, they forgot that. We don't want to be late. We want to be respectful. And again, I turn to go back because I forgot something. And guess what? I lose my balance and I fall. OK? Some of the easy exercises is just going to the side, to the side, to the side. Remind your body that yes, oh, I can actually move in this direction. Hold on to something so that if you do have to change directions, your body will be able to support that. It builds your muscles and your strength and your endurance also in your legs. Keep a phone nearby. This one's a little bit easier because we, we have our cell phones. Okay, so keep your phone nearby so you don't feel you're rushing to the phone. Clear the way. Get those shoes back in the closet because they give birth overnight. That's my biggest problem is my husband's shoes. Make sure you're free of electrical cords, shoes, clothing, books, magazines, other clutter. Um, somebody was talking about dogs dribbling water. Oh my God, I have Akitas. Yes, my dogs dribble water. I gotta wipe it up because I'm gonna slip. It's always in the kitchen. Pets can be a fall hazard. Spilled water, toys, jumping, you can't see them. One of the classes I was teaching, a woman came because her dogs, our animals age with us. Her dogs could not see and they thought they saw something, and they took off, they took her down. She came to class with two black eyes. And she was in a field, and people couldn't find her for a little while. So be aware of your dogs and their behavior. You should go to training class if they're gonna pull you anywhere. But beware. Get help if you need to remove clutter and clear the walkway. Have somebody do it for you, okay? We had a, one of our manner of balance classes, a gentleman, he gave up his snow plow. It was the hardest thing in the world. He was 85 years old, and he just wanted to go out and snow plow. His wife kept saying, I'm gonna find you in a snow bank somewhere. And so he finally allowed her to hire someone to plow their driveway. So I, we said, you know what, if they miss the spot, you can go out there and, and do that. But you know, it's hard for people to give up the things they've always done. My husband said, I'm not mowing the lawn anymore. I've got a service. So he's thrilled. They don't do as good a job, but he's thrilled. All right? It makes your life easier. Slippery one what? Use non-slip mats in the bathtub and shower doors. Grab bars if you need it. Wipe up spills immediately. Night lights. Woo! No light nights. Light nights. Throw rugs. They can throw you. Okay? 
Uh, one of my other uh, co-workers, she would go down to Florida every year to visit her aunt. Her aunt had wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, 11 by 14, 8 by 10, and 5 by 7, and then a little rug under her ottoman, all in one room. And so every year, Kathy would go down, and she would get rid of them. And then they would get, she'd go back the next year, they had given birth, and they were back. You can trip, okay? Make sure they have the backing so they don't slip. If you like how they look, put non-skid backing on them. <clears throat> Tread carefully. Stairways should always be well lit. They have handrails, the length of both sides of the stairs, okay? Anybody wear those shoes anymore? I don't. But, it, but well, I've never worn those shoes. Well-fitted shoes are important, all right? Um, I Flip-flops, I love them. They are terrible for your feet. They're terrible for you when you drive. If you have to wear sandals, wear supportive sandals. Alcohol, it can make you unsteady. Check in with friends or relatives. Consider if you need it, a medical alert system or if someone you know could use one. Exercise. Set realistic goals. It's not what you do, you know, how you do it. It's what can you individually do. If you want to go walk, walk. If you do want to do some exercises, find a senior center that, you know, has... I know Senior Services in Crystal Lake has fit and strong. Work at it. Get yourself into a routine that you do something several days a week. It's key to increasing your strength and your balance. So, important reminders. Plan ahead. Don't put yourself in a position where you're rushing. Exercise. Increase your activity. All right? Doesn't matter what it is. Keep yourself active. Get your legs a little bit stronger. Get your flexibility, like in your ankles, so that it can support you and maneuver as you walk. Take your time. Don't rush. Ask somebody to do things for you that you know you shouldn't be doing. Um, we had an emergency room physician come. I have a program at the hospital called Senior Breakfast Club. And he came to talk about falls. One of the stories he told was it was an 85-year-old man who always cleaned his gutters. He didn't want to give that up. Guess what? One spring, there was a severe storm coming. He realized, oh, I haven't cleaned my gutters for this summer or the spring yet. He literally went out with a ladder as the storm approached to clean his gutters. He fell, he ended up in an emergency room. He didn't go back home. He ended up going to a nursing home. He went from completely independent and completely lost his independence. And that's what I mean by we do things that actually put our independence at risk. It doesn't prove, you know, that we're still independent, we can take care of ourselves. It's the acronym for his talk was actually stupid. And every S, T, U, because that's what we do. We do stupid things that the combination of everything increases our fall risk. So it's okay to ask for help. I have one of our, uh, actually she's from Lakewood, her name was Pat, and she took our manner of balance class and she decided, you know what, I have to have somebody clean out this area. She had to ask her daughter. She knew her daughter was going to make comments through the whole thing, and she didn't want to hear it. But she wanted to ask for help. So she made up a contract with her daughter and made her daughter sign it. The first thing was, no sign. Oh, I can't believe you still have this. The second thing was, no eye rolling. <clears throat> she's not sighing now, but she's eye rolling. No eye rolling. The third thing, no 
comments from the peanut gallery under her breath. And the fourth thing was no arguing. And her daughter signed it, and her and her, and her, and her daughter cleaned out that room how she wanted her to. Okay, so if you have to do that, if you have to create a contract with your family to keep their mouth shut and just do it to help you, I know it's hard for me, my daughter, I drive her nuts, I have to learn to zip it, so it goes both ways. That's what you have to do. But she needed the help, so she found the way to do it without losing her mind. Install grab bars, avoid throw rugs if you can, if you love rugs, make sure they have the backing so they don't slip. Wear supportive, sturdy shoes, and set realistic goals for activity. Don't go, okay, I'm gonna start working out five days a week. Guess what, you won't. I'm gonna start one day a week. I'm gonna do uh, some exercises 10 minutes a day. Then I'm gonna maybe do 10 minutes twice a day, okay? I'm gonna go to the senior center or I'm gonna come to the college and see what I'm gonna call and find out what, I, I know they have a, a workout area actually with the woman Pat who I told you the story about her and her husband are in their 80s and they come here to McHenry County College and I think there might be people in the workout area that can facilitate and help you while you work out there's lots of opportunity out there so on the back of the presentation is this are you at risk for falling sheet and if you answer yes to any of those, guess what? You are. Okay, it's on the back. If you ever want, if you want to take a look at that. So, do you have four or more medications? Have you fallen in the past year? Do you wear floppy slippers? Yes. Or a long bathrobe? Do you have trouble getting in out of the bathtub? Do you have trouble walking without holding on to something? Do you have trouble getting in and out of a chair? Do you have trouble with your balance? Do you have throw rugs? Do you have stairs without rails? Do you have clutter? Yes, my husband's shoes. Do you have trouble seeing pathways or pets? And are you afraid of falling? So if anybody, you know, I've got some yeses on there. Because of my husband, I'm, a, I'm at a fall risk. <laughs> so I, I gotta work on him. I end up throwing his, my, his shoes at him. Put them away! There is something called a matter of balance. That is a fall prevention class. It is eight sessions. So what we won't work on with a matter of balance, and we do at the hospital, senior services does it, both in McHenry and Crystal Lake, is it works on our body. So there's exercises that are pinpointed to help people. They are just sitting in a chair or standing behind a chair to increase flexibility, endurance, strength, which will improve your balance. And then the other thing is the brain. It's our head, okay? I, like I said, I work out, I'm strong, I lift weights. I still fall down, I have fallen down my stairs and I fought, the fifth time was this last year. You know how bad the ice was with all the ice storms? So I walk both my dogs three times a day and they are a couple hundred pounds between, you know, the two of them. And my husband's like, we shouldn't be walking the dogs, there's ice everywhere. And I'm like, no, I walk on, I walk on the grass. Well, the hardest part was actually the sidewalks that has been in between the driveways. So we're almost done with our walk. And I hit a nice patch. And as I'm going down, I'm hearing my husband, I told you we shouldn't have been walking the dogs. I'm thinking, how helpful is that? But the one thing I did remember is there was a, um, um, a stunt woman who came up with uh, suggestions. If you are falling, what do you do? And I told this to tuck, all right? Tuck your head because traumatic brain injury is the number one injury related to falls and death related to falls. Traumatic brain injury because you bleed, all right? The second is lower extremi extremity fractures. Right, the hip, the hip, okay? So tuck your head, bend. If you're bending while you're falling, 
you're not going from a standing position down, which some people do if they're not flexible. All right? So loosen up, bend, which is what I thought about. The one thing was I thought about my head, and then it says, the other thing she says is, land on your meat if you can. And I did. Land on your meat. All right? So when they say tuck and roll, roll into the fall, that's why. Because you're not fighting it. The, the, if you freak out and you fight it, you're stiff and you're going to go down higher up. If you're going down, you're not going to get as hurt. Those are just some suggestions that if you do fall, protect your head. All right? Why do you think we break our hips when we fall? What direction do we fall when we fall? Who said sideways? Yep. That's why. If you do anything, build those leg muscles so that if you do go down, if you fall, we tend most of the time, not always, to go to the side. If you build your strength in your legs, your quads, your hamstrings, riding a stationary bike, you know, marching, anything that's going to increase those leg strength. Hold on, all right? because you might fall to the side and you might actually catch yourself and not get hurt, okay? So the matter of balance class is eight sessions. We work on the brain, we work on our behavior, how we think about our life and falling, and then we increase physical activity to improve strength, flexibility, and balance. We do do it at the hospital about three or four times a year. I've done it at other locations throughout the community. Um, and then again, Crystal Lake uh, Senior Services and also McHenry do hold classes during the year. It is eight sessions though. So it's once a week for eight weeks because we have to drill it into our brains <laughs> to make change. Change is hard. First thing we have to do is, what do I have to change? What do I have to do to lower my fall risk? And how am I going to do that? And then the activity issue. So it's a combination. That's why they call it a matter of balance. It is a matter of balancing your life to make those changes. And it's not easy. And like I said, every day I approach my stairs, I think about turn the light on. I do turn it on, but then I know I'm always going to go back up to do something, so then I get my light switches in order. <laughs> we all do our goofy stuff. Does anybody have any questions? <clears throat> okay, there are, look for places that do exercise programming. There, I know they have it at MCC. I know they have it at Senior Services. It's worth it. Anything you do is going to improve that strength and your quality of life. That's the main thing. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. Yes? No, I just said thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys. Any questions, let us know.